Hey guys, I'm Phil Town from Rule Number One Investing, and today what I want to talk about are eight simple steps that you need to take to build your wealth. These are eight really important steps that come down to us from the best investors in the world. So if you look at the wealthiest people in America, most of them, I mean, the, obviously the easiest way to get rich is to just be born into the right family, right? But most of us don't have that opportunity. If we look at people who made it on their own, they almost have all gone through these eight steps. So whether you're a brand new investor or you're really a seasoned investor, they hold true for pretty much everybody. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to find a business you like. Now, I want you to hear the word business. You know, I, I invest in stocks. I also invest in businesses because I think about stocks like that, right? So it doesn't matter whether it's public or private, we buy businesses. Now stocks are just little parts of a business. So when I say business, I mean all of the stuff that encompasses the industries like real estate, private companies, public companies, all of those I think of as businesses, okay? Now, where do we start? Well, we focus on industries that we already have some capability of understanding, things that we're, you know, places we're spending money, places where we have worked in the past, um, hobbies that we have, you know, places that we read about, passions that we have maybe. We focus on industries we understand and we stick, we, we just stay really close to this idea that you have to be capable of understanding this business if you're gonna be an owner of the business. And again, when we buy just a few shares of stock, just a little slice of the business, we've got to look at it as if we just bought the whole thing and treat it like that. Treat it like we own the entire business. Now, how do you know which business to get into? Well, you're going to focus on the, the uh, well, these are three M's and then the most important M of all, the fourth one, which is margin of safety that I'll get to in a second. But these first three M's are understanding the business, the meaning of the business. How does this connect with your own value system is so important. You've got to put money into things that you like, things you're interested in, things that connect to your values because you guys, two reasons. Number one, it'll make you a more focused investor. And number two, and focused is good. And number two is that you're going to be voting your values for what's in the world 20 years from now with your money. That's more important than any vote that you can cast. So look at businesses that you like, that you want to see in the world. That's the meaning of the business. The mode of the business, as we've discussed a lot, is just that durable, intrinsic characteristic that protects it from competition. It's some kind of, you know, water around the castle that says, hey, you can't attack me because of, you know, I have railroad tracks that go from Long Beach to Chicago, so you can't build new railroad tracks and so you can't attack my business. So we're looking for some kind of a moat. The third thing is we want a really good management team. Look for people that you believe you can trust. And there's always a lot of subjectivity here. Warren Buffett says he just looks for people he feels comfortable having as a brother-in-law or a sister-in-law. So look for management that is has integrity, number one, and number two, has talent. And the way you do that is to just dig into the letters these guys are writing to their shareholders, research their background. Most of these big managers have gotten articles written about them in Wired 2.0, Fortune, Forbes, Wall Street Journal. Just the power of Google here can be amazing. All right, so meaning moat management will find us a really good company. And then the fourth thing is margin of safety, all right? Now, that takes us to the second big issue is how do you find the value of this business? Because at the end of the day, we're buying a business and we know because of just as Charlie Munger says, the vicissitudes of life, right? The ups and downs of life can just change the, uh, the, the nature of the business down the road. And so we need to get into this business with a margin of safety. So in order to do that, we're going to calculate the sticker price and we're going to do a payback time evaluation. In other words, these are two different ways to arrive at value and then be sure that we set the value and then buy it at a, at a margin of safety price far below that value. Now, how do you do a sticker price and how do you do a payback time from free cash flow? We've got calculators on the website that'll help you guys do that for free. Go to rule1investing.com, just check out the free resources section. There's great calculators in there for you to use. So valuing the business, that gets us to the fourth M, which is margin of safety, okay? Now, you've got an idea what the business is worth. You know you wanna buy it at half off of that price. That's the margin of safety price. So the third thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put this business on a watch list and you're gonna watch it 
until the price of that business goes below the margin of safety price. Now this brings us to one of the single most important things you need to know about this kind of investing. This kind of investing requires that you do very, very little, all right? We want you to be lazy to the point of sloth. In other words, be patient, be excessively patient. Be so patient that you almost never do anything. Now to put this in context, Warren Buffett at Berkshire Hathaway is investing over $120 billion. And I was just at a meeting with Charlie Munger yesterday where he was talking about his annual report at the Daily Journal and Charlie said that typically they only buy one or two things a year, a year with $120 billion. So the best investors in the world are saying that the key thing to do a really good job of investing is to know the value of the business as a business, be able to buy it at a discount to that, and in order to do that, simply be patient and wait for the market to fluctuate and bring you that business at that discounted price. The major mistake most people make is they just try to buy it right now. And that's where you get leveled to just, you know, five to 6% per year. We want 25% a year and to do that, you gotta be patient, all right? Fourth, when the price gets to where you want it to be, right? So let's say you think this thing is worth $50, you wanna buy it for 25, here comes a big recession, and down come the prices of all the stocks, and here's your great company available at $25. What do you do now? Well, let me tell you, what you do now is you control your fear, because I'm telling you, when that stock goes from $50 to $25, there's going to be a lot of people who are afraid of owning anything in the market. They don't know where it's gonna stop going down. And you know, neither do I, neither do you. So when that stock goes to $25, the challenge is going to be for you is to be able to buy when other people are afraid. But this is the giant secret that Buffett has been telling everybody for 50 years. You buy on fear, you sell on greed. And everybody goes, oh yeah, yeah, you buy on fear, you sell on greed, sure, okay. But when the fear starts, it affects us too. So the critical thing is you are capable of understanding the business, you see it as a business, it's got a big moat, great management, you know the margin of safety price, and then you buy it when it gets into the margin of safety price. I was on CNBC in 2009 and I said, look, I'm stepping in and buying this stock right now because everything's on sale. And they said, well, aren't you worried about the market continuing to go down? And I said, uh, yeah, it could continue to go down double where it is right now, but these things are on sale and I'm buying them on sale now because we don't know what the future is. What we know is we can buy this great business on sale, do it then. And you don't do it a little bit. That's another terrible mistake. So this fourth point is that you're gonna buy when it goes on sale and you're gonna load up the dang truck, okay? It's not, here, here's how Buffett says it. When it's raining gold, you don't hold out a thimble. You hold out a bucket. So you load up the truck. Believe me on this, because I've done it and it's so horrible. You get it right, the thing's on sale, and you only put in a little because you got caught up in the fear. You load up the truck, okay? Fifth, start acting. As soon as you own this thing, start acting like the owner of that business, because you are the owner of that business. Whether you own one share or you're like Buffett and you own the entire thing, you're the owner of that business. So you're going to treat that business as an owner and deal with the emotions of ownership, the fear, the greed, the things that are happening with that as part of what you're gonna go through as an owner. And this is why you're not gonna own 50 stocks. You're gonna own five or 10. As a novice, let's try to do 10, okay? Charlie Munger, three. He likes three stocks, okay? Now, what are you gonna do as an owner? You're gonna do what a business owner would do. That's it, that's it, it's a simple thing. You've got great people running your business, so what are you gonna do? You're gonna read reports from your CEO, you're gonna to listen to your CEO every quarter, tell you how things are going, you're gonna follow the news, you're gonna pay attention to that business. And if something starts to happen to the moat, or something starts to happen to the management, or something's changing in the industry, then maybe you exit that business, okay? But first, before you do that, you go to step six which is you want more of it. We call this stockpiling, and I wrote about it in Payback Time, about adding more at ever graded prices. Now, when you do this, you're gonna be dealing with the emotional rule of investment. Trust me on this. The emotional rule of investment says, oh, every time I buy that stock, it goes down. 
But that's good. Stockpiling loves the emotional rule of investing. If it only were true that every time I buy a stock, it goes down, I would buy it with $10 and I'd get ready to load up the truck every step of the way down. So what you're going to do is you're going to control the emotional rule of investing by just remembering it isn't you making these things happen. You know the value of this business, you know, it's massively on sale. So you're buying $5 bills, excuse me, you're buying $10 bills for $5. Awesome. And now you can buy more $10 bills for $3. So what are you going to do? You're going to snap up more of it. Of course, you're going to get a great price and you're going to dollar cost average into this thing, but you're going to dollar cost average with a brain, not just buying it all over the place, hoping you get an average price. that's good. No, we're going to buy it with the first price being on sale and ever bigger on sale as we go down. So we end up with a really, really great basis in this company. And then you're going to watch those big five numbers. Okay. The big five numbers will tell you that that company still has its moat. As long as those big five numbers are good, forget about the market price, except just to buy more. The big five numbers, of course, are the four growth rates for earnings growth, sales growth, book value growth, and cash flow growth, plus return on equity, return on invested capital. I would almost add one more, check the debt, watch the debt. You're the owner of this business. If they start loading up debt, that's a red flag. Okay. So you're going to treat it just like you own it. Seventh, seventh, we're at seven already. It's cool. Now you own businesses. Now what you're going to inevitably sell the business. We don't want to sell, right? But there's three times when you sell, you're going to sell when you need the money. You're going to have to have to do it at some point. You need money when you're retired, you're going to sell when the fundamentals change. That means those big five numbers start to go south on you. It means something's changing in this business. And if you can't figure out what it is, they can't tell you what it is. Then it's probably time to leave because the investment is starting to turn like the moats getting broken. And third, you sell when the price gets stupidly too high. So we sell on greed. So we will clear it out when the price gets too high, well above the sticker price, like at least 20% or more above sticker, then you can buy it back when it comes back down. And finally, the eighth step, this is awesome. The eighth step is really simple. Once you've done these seven steps, then you just repeat those seven steps over and over and over again until you've built up true wealth and you're living very comfortably for the rest of your life. That's how you do it. And when you break it down to these eight simple steps, investing on your own, it just doesn't be that scary, right? I mean, it, once I learned this, even though I started with very little money, once I learned it, it wasn't scary anymore. I had a good game plan that I could follow. And those seven steps are fabulous with that eighth step is to just, you know, wash and repeat. So if you follow these correctly, these eight steps are going to put you on a path to more wealth than you can possibly imagine. And that's the truth. If you give yourself time to let this work out, you're going to be richer than you could ever believe. And you're going to change generations in your family. We call that generational wealth and it's incredible. So now what I'd love to do is hear from you guys. What do you plan to invest in to build your wealth? What are you thinking about, about these steps? Have you started any of these steps yet? And how's your progress? So leave a comment below with your answer and I'll be sure to follow up with you. Thanks for watching. Now go play. So if you enjoyed this video and you think it was valuable for teaching you more about how to rule your financial future, then please subscribe to my channel, like this video and share it with your friends, will you? Or anybody else that might benefit from this information.